Some big news okay, uh, from Adrian Wojnarowski right now. Whoa, a Woj bomb to start the show. Hang on, hang yes. on. What's going Miami, on? Here? Miami's Tyler Hero, who was upgraded to questionable, is expected to suit up for game five Whoa. in an attempt a return tonight. The hope is that Hero doesn't suffer a setback ahead of game five and can yeah. still manage the discomfort in his right hand, sources said. Hero has been out since fracturing the hand in Game 1 versus Milwaukee in the opening round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Wow. So there we go. We start the show off with a Woj bomb. Hero there coming back. Spolstra going, pulling out all the stops here. This is it. Go hard or go home. And Hero, who has been practicing with the team but hadn't been cleared, there was thoughts that, well, you know, they don't want to rush him back and they're not sure how he's going to, you know, get back into the swing of things. Well, it's do or die time now. So uh, Hero is jumping back into the mix. And let's see how that impacts things, man. It doesn't say will he start or will he come off the bench. It says um, no setbacks. Yeah, it doesn't say. Doesn't say. He's expected to suit up and attempt a return tonight. So I would think it's a it's a bench situation, you know, with, with Vincent and Struess already in the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, even though those guys have kind of been struggling as of the last two or three games, you don't really want to kind of mess that chemistry up. I think he comes off the bench. Come off the bench and let it fly, man. What do you have to lose? Yeah, I don't see how you want to throw him into the starting rotation and throw off that rhythm. You also want to start out strong and ease him back into it, in my opinion. I, I'd i be shocked if he started tonight. No. Because that's a lot of faith. That, then you're really trying to throw things at the wall and see what sticks if yeah. you're Eric Spolstra. And if I'm Mike Malone, then I try to read that as fear, and I try to tell my guys to go uh, like foot on the pedal attack see what hero has go right at tyler hero you know he's not a great defender see what he can do man make him work on the defensive end yeah and then uh limit him offensively yeah go right at him and who knows and maybe they try to swipe down on the hand you know maybe test him mentally see if he's built for it physically and mentally you know, going to be an interesting chess match there, but uh, the Heat could certainly use them because some of their guys that have gotten them to the dance thus far have been struggling. And, you know, you know look at Max Struess last four games. He's had three-point sniper, 19% from three last four games on, on damn near seven attempts. Uh, we go to Gabe Vincent, who was a hero in the first two games. Or, or, or one of the top plays in the first two games. Um, you know, last two, he's, he's come back to the pack a little bit. 0 for 4 in game 4 from 3. 1 for 6 in game 3 from 3. Whereas in games 1, he started 5 for 10. In game 2, 4 for 6 from downtown. So those guys have cooled off. Jimmy and Bam have delivered consistently offensively. But they're going to need a little bit more punch. They're going to need more punch, right? Uh, role plays are role plays for a reason. If they are more consistent, they be stars. So I think the hero addition, they don't have anything to lose at this point. You get somebody that can score in isolation, that can catch and shoot. If if he's in rhythm, you have no idea. He's coming in ice cold in a winner go home situation. But they got they have nothing to lose. Go ahead and you know throw him in there and see what he does. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to see if Spo goes 11 tonight, then, if you're throwing him back into the mix. Because we've seen him go 9, 10, you know. So, it'll be interesting tonight, man. We'll see what Spolster wants to cook up and, and, yeah. and go out there with. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we see some Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero minutes, because both of them, you know, better offensive players than defenders. Yeah. So, it's just interesting, man. You would think you want to get hero back into the series earlier to get him into some rhythm yeah bring him back in a game five do or die on the road in denver high altitude it's tough <laughs> asking a lot it's you're just, asking a lot it's, it's it's as tough as it can get but look man they have they literally have nothing to lose uh they're down three and one we know teams in the finals that are down three and one have a 35 that are down through that are up three one in the finals have a 35 and one record Who's the team with the one loss? Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors. That's a fact. And as a matter of fact, on this day, back in 2016, the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, won the first of what would be three straight to upset 
the, well, to beat the Golden State Warriors for that championship. So, look, you can't count out the Heat. They showed us this year that you really can't. But as we said in many of these games, you know, uh, Denver's just, they're, they're just the, the better team, man. The better stars, the more complete team, the hungry team. And I just think it's, it's Denver's time, man. I just think it's their time. You're going to need excellent performances, like perfect performances yeah. from everybody to really make a comeback like the Cavs did against the Warriors. I just don't see that happening at this point. I mean, Caleb Martin is not performing like he did in the previous rounds. Struess has been struggling to shoot. Gabe Vincent has been throwing out a rhythm based on his foul troubles. It's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough. And then, and now you're going to ask Tyler Hero to come back and say, hey, man, no, you haven't played in a minute. Can <laughs> I'm you save here. us? <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here to win. Yeah, got to be a tall order. But, hey, if anybody can do it, it's the Miami Heat. Like you said, they're going to need a, a perfect game. Yes, they. I would expect them to play with desperation. I would expect Jimmy and Bam to, to come with it. You know, this is the last hurrah. And it, it's going to take them shooting better, much better. Remember, 48%, 48.5% from three is where they hit in game two. And they still only won by five points, right? Five is, or it was a three points. They won by three points. I think it was 111, mm -hmm. 108 game two because Murray had the chance to tie it at the end and, and he missed it. Yep. They won by three in game two. So all of that, and they still only won by three points. To me, outside of that fourth quarter where Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry start going ballistic, outside of that, the Heat haven't, there hasn't been another quarter where you could say, well, the Heat really took this one or they dominated this quarter. They've been, they've been outclassed for basically the entire series outside of that one quarter in the fourth. And if Denver doesn't have those uncharacteristically boneheaded lapses on defense, this could be a sweep already. Yeah, you got Michael Porter Jr. playing, KCP playing to what we saw in the previous rounds. It, it wouldn't even be close. Yeah. But... Miami, the thing that you're going to need for Miami tonight, if you don't get those role players, Jimmy's got to step up. Actually, in all honesty, Jimmy's got to step up either way. If you yep. want to see this series get extended, Jimmy needs to have a playoff Jimmy performance. He needs to put up 35-plus and really have great efficiency and, and just bend the defense at his will. We yep. haven't really seen Jimmy do that since Milwaukee. Like He, had, he has had moments in series where it's like, okay, he attacks, he defeats the double team, triple team. Uh, you know, he catches somebody whacking on defense, falling asleep at the wheel, and gets a backdoor cut. But other than that, Jimmy hasn't really done anything. He's been very consistent, very consistent, getting you 25 points, 20, yeah. 25 points on the regular. But he hasn't done anything where you're like, whoa, 34 points like you saw from both Jokic and Jamal Murray, 41 points like you saw from Jokic. Yeah. Like, we haven't seen anything like that. And if Miami looks to do anything in the series to make a comeback and make another historic performance, you're going to need Jimmy Butler to be at the front of that. Absolutely, man. Here's a little bit of the Miami Heat side and what their mindset is going into this game five. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We have an incredibly competitive group We've done everything the hard way, and that's the way it's going to have to be done right now again. Uh, and all we're going to focus on is getting this thing back to the 305. Definitely not going to hang our heads or uh, quit. That's that's not an option. Um, it's not going to happen. Just got to do whatever we can to get the next one. You know, we just have to believe in uh, one game at a time. It's winter go home right now, and, you know, we're, we've been – our intensity has been pretty high, and uh, but when you get in these situations, you have to really be focused on every second. One possession, one quarter, half by half, um, and just get it done by any means necessary, and we'll figure the rest out. I believe in my guys. Back against the wall, you're going to get our best version. That's the beauty of it. We get another game, so we're not going to say act like the series is over or anything like that. It's first to four. Now we're in a must-win situation every single game, which we're capable of. Um, some correctable things that we got to do, but... It's not impossible, so we got we got to go out there and do it. We got three yeah. to get. Well, as we said, if if there's any team, is if there's ever a team to do it, or just to get a win tonight and take it back to Miami for Game Six, it would be the Heat. You know the the coach never gets too low, never gets rattled, and I think that part of their culture kind of 
permeates throughout the team to Butler to Bam. They've had a never say quit, never say die attitude. And they, they have the vets. They have Lowry, who's an NBA champion. They have Kevin Love, who's an NBA champion. They have Udonis Haslam, who could be a locker room voice for them. He's an NBA champion. Obviously, Spolster has the rings, Riley, so on and so forth. So they have the guys. They have the mentality. And yes, the Nuggets are, are the more dominant team. But uh, this is a new territory for the Nuggets as well. Can they close? Will they get, uh, you know, too full of themselves? Can they close will be very, very interesting to see, man. Well, we'll have to see what happens tonight, man. Good. I don't think they're going to do it, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, don't. So. I, don't I just so. don't think they're going to be able to do it, man. Yeah. I think Denver, at this point, they're... they. I think Denver knows they can't let up at all. Yeah. They're going to come out here and think, we, if, we, if we give Miami an inch, that's just too much for them to give them any sort yeah. of confidence. And doing it on your own home court, being aggressive, I think that's what we're about to see tonight. And we still haven't seen a good KCP or Michael Porter Jr. game, and they're going to be home. Role players play better at home. Yeah. It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough for Miami to overcome that. I think Denver takes it, walks it up. And we see the end of the series tonight. And I think you're going to get a big performance out of both Murray and Jokic. Because I also believe, you know, saw a factor. They know how much it would mean to the fans if they could do that on their own home court. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. I absolutely agree. And and here's Mike Malone after uh, game five. After game four, rather, on his team's mentality and their approach. Here's Mike Malone. Guy stepped up. You know, it was... Um... They start, we're up 13 to go in the fourth quarter. They start out 8-0, and that coincides with Nicola picking up his fifth foul. So they came out aggressively. They have us on our heels. And usually in the regular season, when Nicola went out, things kind of went haywire. Uh, but I can say not just tonight, Mike, but throughout these playoffs, however many games we've played now, the, guy, the non-Nicola minutes have gone really well. And we called a timeout. We ran a play ATO. Jamal knocks it down. Really well executed. And then that unit that was out there, you know, Jamal, Bruce, Jeff, Aaron, and then, you know, uh, KCP or Christian, they defended. I mean, the, the fourth quarter, we held that team to 22 points, 39 from the field. We outscored them in the second half, I think, 53 to 44. Uh, and then Bruce Brown in the fourth quarter was amazing. You know, he had, I think, 21 points. 11 of those were in the fourth quarter. They were giving Jamal so much attention that let's get Jamal off the ball, let Bruce make some plays. He was aggressive, got to the basket, made shots, and, uh, and tonight was an impressive performance. I thought Aaron Gordon was huge all night long, man. He, he brought his hard hat tonight and was just a warrior on both ends for us. Nicola, you know, he had another great game. And one of the best stats of the night, Mike, was Jamal Murray had 12 assists, no turnovers. In a game where he's getting blitzed and bodies thrown at him all night long, did not have one turnover, and that's just remarkable. So truly a team win. Um, we're not satisfied. We're going home. We know we have a, uh, a lot of work to do, and we're going to take it one quarter at a time. A lot of work to do one quarter at a time. And, and as he said, shout out to Michael Powell in the chat. He talks about uh, Denver has having good balance, and that's what the coach is referring to right now. The non-Jokic minutes. They come out and they deliver offensively, defensively. Bruce Brown, 11 of his 21 in the fourth quarter, eight in the final two minutes. Jamal Murray handling the pressure. I mean, it was a good job by Miami. The for taking the ball out of Jamal Murray's hands, he was just better. 12 assists, no mistakes, no turnovers, a flawless, flawless playmaking game for Jamal Murray. This is, this is a team on a mission right now, man. Absolutely clicking on all cylinders. No doubt about it. Well said. Uh, that's why. So it's over tonight, man. I just think yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's over. I, I just really think I it's think over. So. I, I think it's over as well, man. Um, Aaron Gordon and so shout out to Josh Eberly for uh, for this tweet. Aaron Gordon NBA Finals plus minus in the last five years. Aaron Gordon plus fifty three, leading everybody. Kevon Looney last year plus forty eight. Uh, Drew Holiday. 2021 plus 3780 in the bubble plus 49 he was a monster danny green toronto raptors plus 35 aaron gordon going absolutely ballistic um just fitting in like a glove 
with with Jokic and Murray on both ends of the floor. And it, it's such a bonus to have him take on the dirty work. He had to take on Carl Anthony Towns, LeBron James, Kevin Durant. So you have a guy like that that's taking the dirty work, who's taking the pressure off of Jokic and Murray. Not to say that they don't have to work on defense, because obviously you can't you can't uh, underrate NBA players. You know, guys will tell you all the time, this, this, guys who you think are scrubs out there can, can put in work. So it's not to say that their jobs, you know, that to take those guys lightly, but he's obviously taking on the class of each team. And Butler in this series, the class, the class of each team, it it it, it helps for your other stars when you have a guy, a glue guy that can do that. And then offensively, he can push the ball up the floor. He's getting rebounds, excellent cutting, high flying, using his athleticism. Complimentary piece to your two stars, man. Aaron Gordon, is, he's been great. Absolutely. Aaron Gordon's the case of like, sometimes you got to figure, you know, sometimes you're in the wrong role and you're viewed, at di- viewed as differently, right? You think of him in Orlando and people are like, oh, he's overrated. Uh, it doesn't really offer much, not really a winning player, all these negatives that go with it. Right. But then you put him on a different team, utilize his strengths and look at him now, man. We're talking about a guy who we can legit say had the Aaron Gordon game in game four and was a big reason to why they won and why they're up three, one in the series. So it's good to see his story change because he has been so impactful, man. And it's just finding the right guys where you can insert them into, right? Obviously, it helps when you have someone like Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic as your one and two guys. But him being that third, fourth option on this team and offer and doing all the gritty work, you need someone that can do all the gritty work, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a role player that doesn't really get a lot of high praise. But when you watch what he does on the floor, he's so important because prior to that, it was, you know, uh, what was it? Um, Jeremy Grant. Jeremy yep, Grant was yep. legitimately... Who, Yo, so Aaron, who Aaron yeah. Gordon took over for that role. And losing Jeremy Grant was big for Denver, a versatile defender, a guy who took True. efficient shots, right? Timely shots. And you saw how big he was in that Western Conference playoffs in the bubble. Losing Jeremy Grant was a big loss to Denver, and they were able to replace him with Aaron Gordon, who's doing that, if not as a at, at a higher level than what Jeremy Grant did. So, yeah. yeah. Salute to Aaron Gordon for what he's done, man. True, indeed. And then, and then on the other side, you have a Bruce Brown who was a former Net. I had no clue why the Nets let him walk, but it, but his comments on his free agency and his upcoming uh, contract is it, just very, very interesting, man. Here, here is Bruce Brown on on what happened in free agency uh, last off season. Yeah. So the rumors coming into free agency last year was that I was getting a lot of offers, which I wasn't. Um, nobody really wanted me. Um, because they didn't know if I could be a guard or not. Um, so I, I kind of took it personal. Um, but I knew after the season, the, the way I played in Brooklyn, it wouldn't fit or people would question how I played. Um, so I kind of told my agent that I was going to get F this summer. Like, I already knew it. Um, so I just came in with a chip on my shoulder. And Brooklyn, I mean, Denver came in and said the right things. Um, and the click and it was perfect. perfect. Crazy, right? And then this this is Brown's um, other comment on uh, on free agencies. Bruce Brown again after uh, Game Four. Talking to Jeff Green a couple of days ago, and kind of he was talking about the grind of a long NBA career, and his message was sort of, "Don't let the business get you down." Now you've talked about coming to Denver, but what kept you from being disappointed in the situation, not coming to Denver, but not having the offers you wanted and making the most of it um definitely was disappointed um but i mean that just added a chip on my shoulder to come out and prove uh what i know i can do uh in this league um and Denver was just a perfect fit um everything obviously fell right in place how we thought it would um so i'm happy to be here all right, that was Bruce Brown man rocking a chip on his shoulder and it, it's just it's incredible uh you know I don't know who to blame for the free agent blunder. Is it the agents? Is it his agent? Or is it NBA team sleeping on this guy? But it's just funny to see how, hey, even the guys that get paid to evaluate talent get it wrong (laughs) sometimes. Whether it's the draft, free agency, or putting together a roster. But I don't see how you look at this guy, what he did with the Nets last year, 
similar things. Cutting. He was excellent at passing out of the short roll. Energy, a high energy guy. Could mm-hmm. knock down a corner three for you. I don't understand how solid you look defender. at that. It's all defender. So I don't understand how you look at this guy and say, we don't have a place, <laughs> place for this guy on our team. So now he goes to Denver. He had a chip on his shoulder, as he said. He signs a one plus one player option at $6 million. And now he's about to be an NBA champion, opt out of his contract, and cash out. Maybe it's with Denver. Maybe it's somebody else. Well, shout out to Bruce Brown, man, for staying with it. Yeah, well, Bruce Brown is like a Josh Hart to me, man. A guy who's a good role player. Got Role players like that have to be on good teams to show what their value is, right? And for Bruce Brown, whatever went wrong in, in Brooklyn, we can kind of tell what went wrong in Brooklyn. But you see his value right now on the Nuggets. Uh, crazy that you think that no one reach out to him. And that's why when we look at NBA teams, man, and, you know, I always, always like, it's always like the funny responses that you see on Twitter. Like, you think you know more than the team, da, da, da. Like, everyone makes mistakes, man. Like, everyone makes mistakes. Coaching, yeah. drafts, scouting. Everybody, like, scouts, <laughs> even the guys that get paid for it. Look, man, we're Knicks fans. <laughs> right, right. Kevin Knox is still out there. Frank Nolakin is still out there. Right, right, right. right. Um, and that's and when you watch someone like Bruce Brown, you're just like, how did this guy get under the radar? I, you could say maybe it might be the agent not doing enough, uh, a good enough job, like for PR wise, like, hey, this is what this guy does. This is what this guy, like, look at his tape. Look what he can offer you. You know, maybe it's a, teams just not recognizing and really looking around the league and saying, oh, this is what he could offer to this team. This is what we need. But Denver took a chance on him. And now talk about the impact that he's made. I mean, he right now being on Denver and when you have someone like Jokic, Murray, once again, he's in the 87th percentile finishing around the rim. He's finishing He's finishing 73% of his shots uh, during the regular season. 73% of his shots. He, he's got 190 out of 262 uh, attempts around the rim, CP. Crazy. That's four feet or less. Like, how can you not want somebody like that who's a good defender, shoot decently from three? You know, he's shooting 36%. He's, a, he's slightly above league average. Like, you, you tell me you get somebody like that who can cut off ball and give you like, – that's the wing that you look for. <laughs> that's the wing it's a legitimate three. For. It's a legitimate three and D wing that you're looking for. <laughs> Craziness. Absolutely insane, man. Well, you know, he, he's about to cash out. So, great job by him staying with it. it. It's a tough league for some of these role players, man, and, and some of these guys that try to make a name for themselves. He found the right place, and he's he's in the right place at the right time, man, and, and contributing very nicely for this Denver Nuggets team. The highest, I think I think he still has, especially with this 21-point performance, he still outscored the entire Nuggets bench throughout the playoffs. Mm. Bruce Brown, the most points, more than the entire Nuggets bench combined in the playoffs. Now, they, they run maybe a seven-man rotation, so he's usually beating out one guy, but... Hey, he's there for his team when they need him, and I believe he's at double digits in in each game. If we look at it, let's go to Bruce Brown's last four games. So to everybody in the chat, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We're going to take some calls in just a second. 732, hang on. Bruce Brown, last four games, 11.8 points, four rebounds, one assist, shooting 50% from three. 21 points in game four. Game three was the only one where he didn't score that much, five points. 11 Mm. in game two, 10 in game one. 50% 50% from downtown so far. So what you want for you got. 53% yeah. from the field overall. So that's what, that's what you're looking for, man. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for, man. Let's go to the phones, man. 732. What's your name? Where you calling in from? Good, okay. Good, okay. Wow, there he wow, is. Wow. Dan from New Jersey, man. He's he's finished with the books. He sounds refreshed. So this is summertime, Dan, now. Dan, how you feeling, bro? Yeah, I feel great, man. Shout out to you. Shout out Alex, man. Yep. I know by this time next year, if we get a better finals matchup, I know the channel's going to grow. I know we'll get a thousand people oh, yeah. to talk about the NBA finals. Oh, yeah. Next we, 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 laid, we laid the groundwork for greatness. Somebody clip this up in the chat. We're laying the groundwork for greatness. It's on the way. June 12, 2023. Yep. Yeah, man. This time that this time next year, I'm going to be calling in. There's going to be a thousand people. It's going to be a long and line. It's going to be That's from a fact. all walks of the NBA, man. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. 
But yeah, man, I'm, it, I just want to talk next if you guys don't mind, man. I oh, mean, these, these finals, bro, <laughs> come on. Yo, yo you got to wait. We, this ain't weekly, man. We Hold on, man, Dan. We got to wait, man. We got to wait. Well, we'll get to your question if you if you have time at the end of the show, only because we, we got a program. We got to, you know, stay. We got to stay on topic, Dan. We got to stay on topic, man. I got you, man. I got you. I'll stay on hold. All right, cool, cool, cool. You should have called in next weekly last night, man. <laughs> I thought he had an NBA finals topic. He wants to talk Knicks. I should have figured, by the way, he started like, maybe when we get a better NBA Finals. By the way, <laughs> let me ask you this next question. <laughs> by the Shout way, out to Dan, though. let's talk Knicks, man. Shout out to Dan from New Jersey. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. If you guys are new in the chat, leave us a hashtag new. We'll shout you guys out. And uh, this is another episode of the NBA Report. CP the Franchise, Alex Rataros on the ones and twos. Tyler Hero cleared for game five. Will that make a difference? What do you guys think, man? Leave, leave us a comment. Call us up. Let us let us know your thoughts on that. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens tonight. I want to get to this Richard Jefferson comment on Nikola Jokic uh, because it was very interesting. I'm trying to find it. And is this it? Hang on, let me see. Is this the, is this what I'm looking for? Yeah, Richard Jefferson on Yoke. Somebody was saying. Uh, Kareem David. Um, I'm trying to find this. Hang on. JJ saying, "Can I ask a Mets question?" A Mets <laughs> question? No, 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 no. We 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 definitely can't do that. Um, but basically, it, it's a clip of Richard Jefferson basically saying that, you know. You have to, teams are now going to start adding more big man depth to basically try to guard a Nikola Jokic. That was basically Richard Jefferson's comment. I was looking for the actual audio soundbite, but I couldn't find it. But that was his comment there, that teams are going to start assembling their rosters to take this guy on, man. What do you think about that? Mm, like what just keep drafting centers i don't see that i don't see that i mean look if you're if if you look at what miami is doing right now you could say what was i just think i think i saw something today that if if the heat lose pat riley should go out and go get damian lord i think mm. I, oh that was a that was an athletic article mm -hmm. that was an athletic article if the miami heat lose Pat Riley should go out and go get Damian Lillard. So they're not even thinking about drafting a center to battle Jokic. It's you need more star power, someone who can help you offensively. And I think when you watch Miami, how they face up against the Nuggets, you could say that. You could say they need somebody who's more consistent offensively because they're not too far out of these games. For the most part, these games have been tightly contested. Yeah. You know, they've been... Up until the end, they're usually within 10 points throughout the entire game. So I don't know if you necessarily need somebody to watch out for Jokic, but I think you just need another impactful player, more so of a star, if you want to keep up with him. And I think when you look at Jimmy Butler, he's been very consistent. He's a star. Bam has been a star. But your role players have just not shown up. If the role players show up, we're probably talking about a different series. True, true indeed, man. This was a clip. I, I did find the clip. Here, here it is. Uh, Richard Jefferson on uh, on yoga chair. This is courtesy of the Road Tripping Podcast. Is Richard Jefferson and Channing Frye. Here it is. You remember when the Warriors first showed up with their small ball, their death lineup, all of that stuff? It took teams a while to like, okay, we're, we're going to compete. We got to load up on wings. We got to do this. Jokic is on the verge of starting to make teams improve their big depth just to throw bodies at him. You don't want Jaron Jackson Jr. guarding him. You don't want Bam guarding him. You don't want Anthony Davis guarding him. So the only way to do that is if you have actual bigs that can guard him. So I, I, I think Denver is just ahead of the curve and they have a chance it'd probably be one two years before teams know and figure out how to really best match up with them that was his comment yeah i don't i don't really see it i don't really see teams that you can't that there is no Jokic stopper right let's just put that out there there is no silver bullet to defending Jokic and his brilliance uh he has size he has cunning he can shoot the three 
He can take you inside. He can post up. His passing ability. He spaces the floor. I mean, he literally does everything. I don't think he's a point center. He's a CP. point center for crying out loud, right? So there's there's no there's no true roster construction that you're going to use to stop him outside of traditionally. Most teams are going to carry two, maybe three bigs. Maybe you have a versatile four or five who's starting like a Jaron Jackson, and maybe you have a Stephen Adams on the on the backup. I don't I don't see them doing anything different other than cloning Jokic and putting him out there. And that guy's just not there. I do like the BAM hybrid center as well in terms of uh, making Jokic play defense. You know, BAM has showed the ability to knock down the mid-range shot. He has the athleticism. He has the speed to maybe take him off of the dribble. Maybe make him work that way. So you have a guy like a Bam who can space the floor a little bit. He can knock down a mid-range. Not necessarily, he's not a three-point shooter, but he can knock down a mid-range. He can attack the basket. So you make Jokic move his feet a little bit. As Jamal Crawford said, moving from east to west. And, and, and what Bam also likes to do is trying to get into his body. I think that is a, the type of center that you want to counter Jokic with offensively. But defensively, I mean... If it's not AD, if it's not Bam, who's out there to defend him? You know, and 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 what Bam is going to find out is what AD found out is that, you know, you look at what these guys did on both ends of the floor, they had a great run. <laughs> they yeah. had they had a good series. And you look at what yep. Jokic does and you, then you realize that it just wasn't good enough. That's how okay. that's how great Jokic has been in these playoffs and in the in the in these finals. In the finals. Like, I just don't understand what type of defender do you see at center coming through through the draft that's going to stop Jokic. Like, uh, Anthony Davis is considered one of the top-end defenders at the big position. Couldn't yeah. stop Jokic. So you're going to tell me that somebody comes through the draft is greater center defensively than Anthony Davis? Like, when Anthony Davis yeah. is fully healthy, he could be one of the top shot-blocking centers, one of the top defenders because of his versatility of guarding the perimeter – Guarding the paint, had a tough time with Jokic, right? Both of them. I, I, I just what? What's the next thing? Yeah, I think what you said is right. You got to go with if you're going to attack Jokic, you got to work, make him work defensively, and he's been decent on defense. Like Bam's still getting his, you know. So right. if that's the way I see you countering, I don't see people going to stock up on bigs because then you're now just changing your depth to more to to a bigger lineup. And maybe less mobile. Yeah. Like you're, you're hoping that you can find centers like that and finding a center that is that agile, that strong at that height. Like Jokic is a seven footer, you know, like that's not a lot of guys are produced like that. You yeah. don't get a lot of Shaqs coming into the league. Not a lot of Yao Mings. There's very few and far between even in bead. You know, we didn't get to see that matchup, but that's probably the closest you're going to get to someone who can fully match what Jokic does. And, not many Embiid's come yeah. through the draft. No, not not at all, man. And, you know, the old adage in sports that, well, it used to be that a good defense beats a good offense. I think that still holds in baseball when you look at, you know, pitching and pitching and relief pitching and, and infield defense. I think that's why in baseball it's not always that the best team wins. Uh, it's a team that's playing the best that goes on that run. But in football – and basketball, because of the rules shifting towards the offense, a good offense is going to be the good defense. So maybe the best counter to Jokic is, as you said, number one, having a star power that can compete and having a better offense, right? If the, Heat, if the Heat's offense that has taken them to the finals shows up in this series, it's a much tighter series. But they're not hitting their threes. And they're not scored as, as much. I think in, in the three games, they've, they've several of these games, they've scored less than 100 points. So, you know, I, I, I think it's more on the offensive side that you're looking to counter them, but not with a player, but with the, your overall team. Just offensively, you got to be better. So, yeah, just, just uh, interesting debate indeed. Area code 267, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? Yo, blast from the plaza, CP. is Angel from Philly. What's good, Angel brother? How y'all feeling? Angel from Philly in the building. Ooh. Angel, how you feeling, man? 
Yeah, I'm good, brother. Um, you know, salute to y'all. Hit that like button. You guys know the vibes. Absolutely. Uh, look, man, I think I think what the keys for this series is, um, you know, first of all, the role players, right? Uh, Gabe Vincent and Max Strews, the last two games, they're four for 27 from three, well, from the field, yeah. and two for 17 from three. You're not going to be Denver when your role players are playing like that. Um, Aaron Gordon by himself, the last two games, is 16 for 25. Uh, three or four from three. So when you got one player that's just outplaying your whole role players, you're not going to beat Denver. Yeah. Uh, what I'm most impressed about is the fact that the Nuggets high basketball IQ. Nobody's selfish. Everybody's passing the ball. And they all know who's going to get the right shot at the right moment. So for me, the coaching is outstanding. The role players are stepping up when it matters most. And even if they're not scoring, per se, they're also making, you know, it, they're also making improvements and, you know, affecting the game elsewhere with rebounding, with defense. Um, just like last game, you saw Braun, you know, have a good game, and then you saw Brown have a good game this, you know, this game. So um, yeah. it's just a great team basketball. That, you know, that's what you like to see when you watch a team play ball. Um, and, um, you know, the free throw shooting as well. And the three-point shooting from Miami, 8 for 25 from, from three. And they were 11 or 35 the game before. So you're not yeah. going to beat Denver when you're shooting like that. And uh, that's just my take, fellas. I had True. to make sure I came through for y'all. Appreciate you it. Know, always want to show support. Love you guys. Good to Have hear from you, man. The, the chat is saying that uh, you didn't reintroduce yourself to the chat, man. Oh, it's in the chat. You can see me posting up in there. I said okay. it's Angel from Philly. You should see it up in there. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Good to hear from you, man. It's good to hear from y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. And shout out shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate what y'all do. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, we, we can talk some more basketball, man. I want to be able to do what y'all do. So I uh, just want to show my uh, appreciation for you guys. And uh, salute to y'all, man. Hit that like button. You guys know the vibes, man. No doubt. Good to hear from you, man. Angel salute. from Philly. Yeah. The goat simp. Salute the, to Angel. The, the goat simp. Smooth. You know, some of the names that we gave him. Uh, but he, mm -hmm. he he left in controversial fashion, man. He he was a he was an avid Knicks fan, TV supporter, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we we hadn't heard from him in a while after after a certain host left in a controversial manner. It, it <laughs> seems like he packed his bag up and and and, uh, and and took off, you know. But but you know the chat saying Angel, you, you got to check in. TM saying you got to check in, man. You can't just you know call in and uh, I didn't know I didn't know you didn't check in. If I if I knew that, I would have asked you to do that first, man. You know, chat saying you, you got to, you know, chop it up with them a little bit first. Yeah. All right. I'm saying Angel from Philly, man. Angel from Philly, man. You got to at least say hi to TM, man. Got to yeah, say hi you, to you gotta check King in. Mod over you there. You got to check in, bro. You know? You got to check in. So we'll tell everybody in the chat. We got Jay from East New York in here. Jamaica Queens, 22. Shout out to TM. We got, uh, who else we got? And Gotcha Opens in here. So, whole KFTB Let's squad go. is in there. Gambus in here. King Katona. Mr. Dons. Mr. Duns. My two cents. Never misses a show. They're checking in from overseas. So, salute to everybody, got, man. Salute to D Block. Got Nick Take Jake in here as well. Nick Take Jake in the building. Salute to John. Ooh. We got Eric Beats in here. Eric L. Beats. Yeah. Never, never misses a show, man. So, salute to the family in here. Chopping it up. What's your guys' predictions in the chat, man? Who wins tonight? Will the Heat take this thing back to the 305, or will we have a new champion?